All right, just uh, barely gathered my thoughts, and uh, I'm actually on the way to the gym, so uh, this actually is a good time for me to digest what happened in that roster reveal. Uh, again, kudos to TNC for organizing everything, and uh, to Wanderlust as well, uh, being on the forefront of the bleeding edge of uh, roster reveal tech in MPL history. Like again, just MPL straight up, just anywhere in the world. They're, they're, they're pushing the boundaries, and I don't know uh, how they're gonna top this one. Uh, as you saw, I actually asked uh, the director, Ingrid, how else she can do better after banger after banger after banger. But uh, again, that's a problem for future her. Anyways, uh, let this be my proper uh, reaction to uh, Rise of the Fallen. Uh, great, again, just from a cinematographical standpoint, just the visuals, the, the narrative, just even taking it out of the esports uh, and out of the league context of, of things, it was a very well written story. Uh, again, the, 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 the visuals and the plot are, again, implied plot are supported by what happened to TNC in the past couple of years. But if you're just watching it, looking at it, taking like random clips, it, it's, it's a beautiful uh, visual art, right? Uh, sound design was great as well, VFX, like they, they kept it very close to the chest. Like it's, it's again mentioned by uh, Mark Dunkirk, very Saving Private Ryan, very, you know, very Black Hawk Down, very Pearl Harbor. And moving that slowly into what it means to the team and what it means to the league and to the community. Again, from, from the very campy but catchy and very strong Rise from the Dead, because again, they were, it's a music video. This just tugs at your heartstrings, right? Or is that just me? Because I come from a military family. There's multiple members of, of my uh, family that are in the military, and what they give to serve uh, our country and their country, because I have relatives uh, who are part of the U.S. military, what they give to serve for the freedom is very similar to what, again, I, I, I hope I'm not blowing it out of proportion, right? But it's very, it's a, it's a life calling to be an esports athlete. So taking what I know growing up as a military kid, like how my dad sacrificed and, and how my mom and I had to, in our, in our families, had to like work with that. Being an esports athlete too, like you're, you're chasing a dream and it takes the love and support of so many people around you for you to succeed. And that's what I, I think went into this as well, like whether that be on purpose or not, because that's what I took from it. So I shed a tear when uh, I saw Coach Ben, right? Now it's Coach Ben, Sir Ben, oh dear Lord. It was just bound to happen, right? Even as a sixth man, even as a roamer, when TNC first became TNC, I was still working with the team uh, at the time. He had such a great mind, he had such great contributions to team discussions and he knew how to plan in game and he knew what was step by step by step like what to do so that's why Ben Tips was such a good thing uh, for him uh, his content line because he literally knew what was going on he knew how to describe that to his teammates to his fans and to people and now for him to be a head coach it just felt like destiny right so him being the commander the general of this army now you know uh, I feel like it's, it's a great time to grow the Phoenix Army, to, to, to rally behind this underdog team. And again, say what you will about their performance in the past few years, but you just gotta love them, right? You gotta love them. It's just the perfect marriage of a great performance, a great uh, presentation, uh, and just the promise of what could be. So again, realistically speaking, let's, let's get, down to, get down to brass tacks. What does this roster look like? It's a seven-man roster, two mid laners, two junglers. Uh, one of the gold laners uh, is a rookie, so that's no mid. Uh, but you also have Yasuo there, again, reverting back into an actual gold laner now, no longer part of the coaching staff. 
Um, you have heads. They're only XP laners, so heads is going to see a lot of play, man. Heads, unless they do like a rope a dope and a trade between TNC Z4 and one of their uh, subs. Again, there's two subs now. You can afford two subs given the roster. Then maybe, but heads, there's a lot of uh, trust and responsibilities on the shoulders of this rookie heads. <laughs> um, in mid, oh my lord, mid is stack, man. You have Goyo, who is just about to hit his peak. Again, there's a lot uh, I'm expecting from Goyo. He's been part of the team for a while now. And again, even in their time with Virgin Souls, he had a lot of promise. Um, and of course, the homecoming of hatred, which I incorrectly tweeted and posted about him being the first import to come back playing overseas an import, uh, as a, an athlete, an import from MPLPH, then coming back into the league as, an, as a part of an actual, actual... I can English. As a part of an active roster. It's late in the evening here. Uh, it, I was wrong, okay? As it is now, before even all the other rosters are confirmed, you have Hatred, Exhort, Kusei, and Demon Kite. Oh, I'll talk about the RSG reaction in another video but yeah we we're here first so i'm sure there's a lot of pressure on hatred right now uh and they also picked up ryzen in the jungle you know y'all y'all know for, ever since his debut again i want to say this I'm a, I'm a big fan of dean sumagi i'm a big fan of dean and can i just say like he does so well like this translates into his gameplay he does so well to fit into whatever team he's part of omega he fit that very well with their rival against blacklist oh man he he went toe to toe. He went toe to toe against then Wise, right? Uh, because again, he was very Carl Teasy in his movements, very mechanically gifted, very like assassin based, and then eventually he grew into this utility based like role player jungler. Uh, again, the way I described it is, it's a dirty job. Someone's gotta do it. So he played the likes of Akai, Baksha, like he just stood in front of people, and even as a fanny, like he played Patsy. He played scapegoat so that the rest of his team can push and do things on the map. That's what he did in MSC 2022 in Malaysia. Um, so now, like even in physically, like seeing the young man, he fits into the TNC mold. Like he he looks great among these you would swear Matin Idol looking dudes. Like he, he fixes up well. He's a handsome young man, so I'm loving it. Um, and then of course Yoshinu, now dubbed Super Yoshi. Uh, he had a lot of promise coming out of uh, his rookie run with Onyx last season. So now he is their lone roamer. And I liked him. I liked him in Onyx. Again, they had so many roamers uh, last season. So now being the lone roamer, and again, you're going to have to do a lot of shot calling, a lot of leadership uh, coming with the role here and the position. I'm expecting them to be tight. I'm, I'm hoping for the best here for, for TNC. So with that said, I'm going to cut it off here. Uh, it's already a pretty long video as is. Thanks for hearing me out. Thanks for always being a healthy part of our community. And uh, watch the other roster reaction videos, all right? We, we were put a lot of work into this. The people you see, uh, of course, yours truly, my editor, Ray Ash, and, and everyone who, part, who was part of the comment section and all of the healthy discussions uh, on social media. Y'all MVPs. Kudos to y'all. Peace.